What's up guys and welcome to Duck Loop Outdoors. My name is Chris and we're gonna be jumping into a bird that I just um, I just showed the customer. Um, so I'll be doing a reaction video on that of him seeing it because he's out in East Tennessee. But um, it's a Harlequin, he killed it in East Tennessee, believe it or not, and I made a water scene. So. Um, if you're looking at adding like water to your taxidermy like habitat, um, this is a video for you. So I tried to break it down as much as I could. Um, I didn't video myself actually doing it like in the process, but I showed you the steps. So this is what I did. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So I'm gonna completely wing it. I'm gonna use some wood stain just to get this uh, piece of wood darkened up and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, we got the uh, varnish on there got that nice darker color so what I'll take note is is the uh, the different grain so whether if I want the bird to be you know facing this way with the nicer grain or you know this way with the lighter the lighter grain or this way with it being more choppy so depending on how I make this mount uh, it's gonna be a Harlequin um, that's gonna decide it but once I start playing around with it, that's where I'll decide which way is going to be like the front, the front way when it's sitting on like the, uh, on the shelf. All right. So we got some Elmer glue. Oh, let me clean out this camera here. Elmer glue shells. Insane. So I'm just going to play with it and try to make it look as natural as possible. All right. So this is what I got so far. I did that black with a touch of brown mixed into it. I took the Elmer's glue and I smeared it all over the, the top of the uh, surface. And then that's when I pretty much threw the sand on top of it out of the bowl. Um, I don't even know the word for that, but pretty much put the sand on it. And then once the sand was all on it, I used a piece of cardboard. I pressed down on it to make sure it, you know, it got into the Elmer's glue. And then I tipped it on its side and gave it a few bumps and made sure I got all the uh, excess sand off of it. So I'm just going to continue going back and forth, playing with it, um, eventually mixing some shells so that way the sand is, uh, you know, covered on the sides of it. And then I'm going to make like a, almost like a pool of water uh, right here, which I'm not going to add more sand to that area, but I want to then transition that, that darker sand over to the lighter sand and have it light over here on the side. So, um, and then that's where I'm going to put the duck. So I have like a pool of water and a duck here. And then I'll probably have um, some other, like the, the sand almost look wet with the epoxy. All right, so <clears throat> I tried to sprinkle it out with the shells in the bowl. It does not work, so don't even try it. So you're gonna have to individually place them once you, you try to mix it. But you can see almost like that edge of where I didn't put the next layer on and that's gonna hold the epoxy for the, uh, the puddle that I'm gonna make. Also, you can see some ridges in here, which is gonna be nice when I pour that epoxy, it's probably gonna fill up those ridges and um, those little pockets and make it look even more realistic. I'm doing a little test run with this to see if that um, Elmer's glue is gonna hold those shells in place or if I'm gonna have to go back behind myself with like uh, super glue or something to actually hold them down a little bit better. But I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my lighter sand to uh, transition um, out here to be uh, lighter and uh, we'll see what that looks like. All right, so it's all dry and this is what I got to make the water scene. So what I'm gonna do is I clipped off the end of this to open up that hole a little bit more. So that way it's easier to suck up the epoxy in this. And then that way I can kind of control instead of pouring it, I can control where I'm actually putting uh, where I want the water. And then, uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. So what I plan on doing is filling in this part. It's gonna be like a puddle. Um, those lines in through there are gonna be kind of like where the, you know, where the water was coming up, coming up into the sand and then washing back out. And then I'll probably end up splashing water all in through here. So just trying to make it look as realistic as possible. But this area right here is where I plan on putting the bird. So once the resin dries, I'll end up, uh, once I mount the bird, I'll get my measurements, drill my holes, and then uh, hot glue it down into 
on top and then I'll probably end up make, mixing up some more epoxy and um, putting some water pretty much on top of its feet. So as if, you know, the duck was standing there for a little bit. All right, bit. so what I did here, I tried, like I said, to pour it in that pocket. Um, it wanted to stay there, but as I got going, it looked more realistic um, the more I put. So uh, if you're doing this, just, I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, you're making a scene as you go. So you kind of have to just go with the flow. And, you know, if it starts to look better than what you had planned, then obviously just keep going. So I kept doing little bit, uh, little bits and pieces at a time and obviously not knowing the actual like structure of it. Uh, like I could see like where I put the puddle, but um, the other like lines itself, um, it looked even more realistic the more I went. And so what I did is I poured in that puddle and then I tilted it. So that way it looked like uh, the water like shifted up into like where the bird's gonna be standing. Um, so it's got some, not like it doesn't look like actual man-made lines um on on the side of it I'll, I'll end up picking up the camera and showing you but um i tried to stay away from the edges because i really don't want to have to deal with um with it coming over the sides um just because when you're looking down on this mount i want it to look like you know just the scene that it's standing on is as it's, as if it was just like cut out and captured um I don't want the, the edges to be um, along along with that. It just wouldn't, I don't think it would look right. And then also, um, I think it would make even, it would make a mess. So it would maybe ruin the wood. I would have a lot more woodwork to do. But uh, the reason why I'm holding the, the hair dryer is if you've ever messed with epoxy before, uh, when you go to stir it and you're mixing the two parts, um, you're gonna be making bubbles. So when you go to pour it, that's also gonna make bubbles. So what you wanna do is after you get done pouring it and you got pretty much the way you want it to look, um, you wanna turn your hair dryer on high or um, on warm. So one or the other, whichever one you like, I like mine on high. And um, you get it on a light setting so it's not blowing like super hard and pretty much just hit it with that heat. And what you're gonna see is those little tiny air bubbles, they're gonna come up to the surface and pop. Um, and that's gonna get you the most clear um, resin as possible. So that way it looks more realistic. So you don't have like a million little, million little dots in there. So I'll flip around the camera so that way you can see it from uh, the way I'm looking. I don't have on a GoPro today. All right, so this is what I'm working with. So if you look deep down in there, you see those little white specks, uh, those are all air bubbles. So what I'm gonna do is continue hitting it with the air dryer. I need to shut up and uh, do this before it starts right, to dry. So I got all the air bubbles out and what is next? So this resin, it gives you 30 to 40 minutes to play with and it takes up to 24 to 48 hours to completely be tack free. Uh, so that way it's not, you know, sticky to the touch. Um, this weekend I plan on mounting this bird and as soon as I get done mounting it and it's on the, on the vise, um, that's why I'm gonna go ahead and drill my holes, get it set, probably make some more resin, pour on the feet, but you'll see that in the next coming clips. Just, um, it's a little bit longer video because I'm showing how to make the habitat. So y'all continue staying in there with me. I appreciate y'all watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Let me know if you think this habitat is pretty cool or you think it's dumb. So um, I'll see you tomorrow. All right, so the epoxy dried and I got a new workbench. I've been working all day on this bird. So it probably took me, I can't even tell you how many hours. So I just got done printing them and um, <clears throat> tying everything up, putting pens in them. And I'll flip the camera around and y'all let me know what you think. So if you think it's trash, let me know uh, if you like it. Let me know that too uh, in the comments. And yeah, feel free to pick it apart. I'm kind of happy with it. Keep in mind it's a juvenile, so it's not fully plumed out. And it's kind of a once in a lifetime type bird in this area, um, being that sea ducks typically don't come out to uh, the Tennessee side. So I'll flip it around. All right, there he is in all of his glory. 
So um, as you can tell, the epoxy, that's all dry. It's not even tacky. Um, so what I'm gonna do once it, once it completely dries, so it'd be almost a month, um, I'm gonna take some epoxy and I'm gonna put it over top of the feet, not completely cover the feet, but um, over the top of the feet. So that way um, he looks like he's actually like, he's been walking in the water. Um, I'm probably gonna put a few pebbles um, around here and more than likely it won't be where the epoxy is. I'm probably gonna put just a few over there just to accent it. Um, and then obviously paint the feet if I haven't said that already. And then he'll be ready to go home. So y'all let me know what you think. I think it came out pretty good, especially for a juvenile. So it didn't save the audio of um, the messenger call. I had the screen record on, but it was my first time doing that. But overall, uh, Jason said that he liked it. And um, his, uh, his son, me and him, we had some code talk because uh, I was getting a lot of... Um, advice from his son on, you know, if he liked it and changes and all that sort of stuff. But overall, customer happy and Bird will be going home probably late June when I travel across the state. So the next bird I'm gonna work on is more than likely gonna be a, um, a redhead. Um, the way I plan on doing that video, I'm gonna wear a GoPro or I might have a, the GoPro off to the side and have it pretty much like uh, the video go on like fast speed. So that way you can see me like work through the entire thing. Or I might just keep a GoPro on the entire time and um, it'd be a very long video. So uh, I might clip it a little bit just to take out some of the nonsense, but um, I'm gonna go through like the entire process with it. Well, it's already skinned, washed, and uh, well, skin, fleshed, and washed and it's in the freezer right now. So really it'd be the actual mounting process. But I said it before, I'll say it again. If you like the video, go ahead and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up and comment down below. And until next time, I've been Chris, this has been Duck Love Outdoors. Y'all stay safe out there.